Rick, in the years that you've been helping railroaders that have been exposed to asbestos in the workplace, what have you learned about where that asbestos was usually found? To tell you the truth, it's been a game of hide and seek for now a couple decades for us, I, us meaning our law firm and other attorneys that represent victims of asbestos cancer case uh, situations. Okay, steam and diesel locomotives on the railroad, lots of asbestos parts. Steam engines, it was everywhere, although those were phased out by the early 1960s in most cases. Diesel engines have been used since the early 60s till now. The railroads liked to tell us as railroad injury attorneys, there was no asbestos on these diesel engines. Well, over years we have proven they were just covering up, that they had uh, pipe insulation, gaskets, different parts, and those parts are still on some diesel engines. When the railroads removed them, it was done in a shop and it's kind of I wouldn't say top secret, but they weren't telling the workers that worked there what those guys in the spacesuits were doing. Um, also, Jim, uh, it was on brake shoes for many decades. Uh, they eliminated the asbestos in their brake shoes on most railroads, but not until the 80s or 90s in some cases. What kind of legal strategies did you and your partners rely on and use to uncover these hidden secrets the railroads were trying to keep from you? Well, in a lot of situations, we didn't get it from the railroad. Well, how did we get it? Well, third parties, uh, say a manufacturer that sold the railroad. We, we would subpoena records from a third party, and they didn't have a dog in the fight. They gave us the stuff that said there was asbestos in the parts. Uh, networking with other attorneys that got the documents from this party or that party. Frankly, if you want to know the truth, most of what we have found to prove asbestos in all of these railroad components, a small fraction of it came from the railroads themselves. Most of it came from other parties. But now it's out of the bag. Thanks, Rick. Please go to our website at hsinjurylaw.com to immediately receive by email our free report on the do's and don'ts when injured on the railroad. If you or someone you know has suffered a serious personal injury, please feel free to contact us by going to our website or calling our 1-800 number.